Hello and welcome to another video on Pydini doing stuff and filming it. Now I wanted to be out on the bike today. I've got a three day weekend, which I don't get many of, but it is miserable as fuck outside. I mean, we had a hell of a storm last night. Um, thankfully the rain has stopped, but it's still freezing cold and there's still a lot of wind. And I just don't think I'd enjoy the ride that much. The wind is dying down, so maybe I'll go out a bit later. But for right now, we're gonna have to do something indoors. So I have got, a box of stuff. Let's see what's inside it. We're going to be doing this on my little workbench. If you want to know how good of a bench this is, I did do a um, product review, you know, unboxing video. If I remember, I'll put a link in the description. If not, there's a whole playlist of my unboxing videos. So let's have a look at this. Move my cup of tea out of the way so I don't spill it. Now we're doing this indoors in the conservatory, um, so the tappity tappity is the dogs that you can hear, they're curious as to what I'm doing. What am I doing actually? What am I doing? Who's all going Right, and if you hear any sort of wind noise and the roof creaking and such like, like I said, there's a storm outside. So we've got here, fairly standard British... <laughs> Fairly standard British Army uh, ammunition box. Quite why it's got on the yellow paint on it, I don't know. Um, I do have another one of these that I keep some of my shooting equipment in, and that's that's not got all this crap on it at all. Um, but yeah, anyway, so fairly standard army box. To find. I'll get the other one to show you. There you go. Look, you have to imagine hundreds of these lined up, full of ammunition being used by the by the British Army. They're great. I mean, these. Uh, this is all. Sorry, I didn't understand. That's because I wasn't talking to you. Yeah, I mean, you see, this one's all rusty and they've been battered. These boxes have probably been around the world. You'd love to know the story of this, where it's been, you know, what sort of war zones it's been in. But yeah, if you ever need a sturdy box for tools or to keep your lunch in or for what we're doing today, making a top box. I highly recommend them. You can get them for like between 10 and 20 pounds, depending on who you're buying them from online. Yeah, I've got two of them now. Um, plus a really large one um, that's down in the garden at the moment that I was using as a top box on my car. <laughs> a roof box. Uh, but yeah, quite why this one's covered in yellow paint, I don't really know. I can't read what it says on here. Something, something, aided brass, bellow, 12 millimetres. Who knows? It's been green and then it's had yellow painted over it. And then there's evidence that someone's put black paint on top of the yellow paint. And there's the remains of some sort of sticker on it as well. Who knows? None of this is really important for what we're doing today. Inside, it's actually in remarkably good condition. This mustn't have been a very old one. So the paint inside... It's perfect. Even has that new paint smell to it. I think it's rusty on the outside because it's been you know, bashed around and well, it's been in use and then stored outside, but that's what these are for. Right, so what we're gonna need for this. So we've got, first off, we've got these clamps. These are M8 45 millimeter U-bolts. These are what we're gonna use to attach it to the back of the bike. I will show you when we get to that as best I can, but like I say, it's windy as fuck outside, so audio will be terrible. I'm gonna try and do as much of this indoors as I can. I've ordered a rear reflector, and we're gonna put that sort of on the back like that. The reason being is the bike does have a rear reflector because it has to have one, but it's like that big, and it's just stuck on the bottom of the number plate. I'd rather have something a bit bigger because safety. So we're gonna have that on the side there like that. We've got, ooh, ding, bacon's ready. Okay. Um, and then we've got these. I got these from Wilco's, because always, um, Eva floor protectors. They're basically just little rubber pads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these on the underside of these and inside our clamps, just to try and reduce sort of noise, vibration, and harshness as we're going along. There's a lot of vibration on the bike. I don't really want to add to it. And of course, I don't want to be riding around with all this yellow crap on, so we've got ourselves a can of Wilco heat resistant spray paint. Now, it's heat resistant, not because this needs to be heat resistant, um, but it, because it's the only black spray paint that was in the shop for some reason. Right, I'm going to go finish making that bacon sandwich, and then we're going to get on with, um, yeah, with making it. I think we'll start with the painting side of it. Right. 
Right, okay, that was a lovely bacon sandwich. I am ready for the day now. Spray painting. It's the logical place to, to start, really, because beyond that, I'm then, like, drilling holes in it, and once I've attached stuff, I, um, you know, like, say, if I put this on there and then paint it, I'm going to paint over my reflector, and then it's not reflective. It's, it's just plastic. So, normally, I'll do this sort of stuff outside, because then any sort of spray that doesn't land on the thing that you're painting is is fine it'll just like land in the grass or something like that it doesn't really matter but it's still cold and windy and miserable out there and wind doesn't really work very well with spray paint so yeah and it's also it's threatening to rain again so we can't be doing any painting outside so i'm gonna have to find a way to do this in the conservatory without painting half my house like it's a fucking ammo can Hmm. A few moments later. We're going to use this banana box, I think. What we'll do is we'll plug up the holes and then we, we should be able to just spray in here. As long as we're careful not to go too mad with it, it should all stay in here. Because, I mean, this... Yeah, if I'm spraying like that, it's not like I'm going to be hang spraying it from a distance. I'm going to spray it up close. I'm not too fussed about the finish on it. I want this to look sort of rough and ready. There's a reason I chose an ammo box for my top box rather than just buy a top box. But yeah, I do want to get rid of this yellow because it's gross. So yeah, okay, let's find something to plug these holes with. Giggity. We'll use some of the crap that comes through my door. So we've got savings for your winter cravings from Sainsbury's. We've got a Papa John's pizza menu. Um, we've got, what's this? Oh, okay, all right, that's, that's a Christmas card from um, one of my partner's dear friends. Um, okay, we won't use that. That's a bad plan, Stuart. Um, yeah, no, we're not doing that. That's just an empty envelope. Um, yeah, okay. And we've got... Brampton Manor Boutique Care Homes. I'm 30 fucking two, you cunts. What the hell? That's got a nice calendar on the back of it, at least. But no, I don't need adverts for a fucking care home. And yeah, I'm basically just going to tape it over the holes. Like that. I don't recall what this envelope was for. I think it had a letter from the pet insurance company. Right, that'll do. Those holes can stay because I need something to carry it with. But yeah, we've plugged up the holes. Oh, that's Bella barking at the postman. Whatever. Just scare him off with our massive ears. Yeah, we've filled the holes, so we're ready to paint. Um, I realised as I was doing this, I should probably change because I'm wearing... The jeans my partner bought me for Christmas, which was about two weeks ago, um, and then the t-shirt and the jumper that they bought me for my birthday last year. I don't want to get spray paint on this stuff, so I need to go and find something more appropriate for this, because otherwise I'll get shouted at. I've always been shouted at. Right, that's better. So, we've got work smoke on, which I don't need for working on the cars. I've got my apron as well adam savage inspired apron right we, we may as well just get get on with it um yeah i'm only going to spray the outside of this i don't need to spray the inside you can see it's in really good nick inside uh, also like i said i'm not even that bothered about the finish on it i just want it to be black i just want to get rid of all this yellow um let's adjust this table first Uh, directions for you to achieve the best results prepare the surface before painting make sure surfaces to be painted are clean dry and free from rust loose debris grease and dust well it's free from all of those things except the rust not a lot i can do about that i mean i suppose i could get the pinwheel out and shave them down a bit here on the lid oh, okay all right now tell me what we'll do a proper job because the weather's getting worse again now i don't know like i'm going out today so all right, let's, let's just try and scrape some of this rust stuff first, shall we? All right, I can't find my pinwheel for the drill, so we're gonna have to do this a slightly slower way. We're gonna use this steel brush that I've got. To be fair, it's actually probably a better tool for the job. 
obviously it's gonna be hard for you to tell on the camera but if i just run my fingers over this there's a few rough spots that might give the pin some trouble but generally it's okay we'll just do like the edges let's start there shall we that's working really well actually the rust is coming straight off yeah i did a product review um of like three different things in one go and this was one of them these brushes um yeah all right fair enough they're, they're good are these oh look it's taking the yellow off as well That's interesting. This paint that they've put on it must have just been some really cheap and nasty spray paint because it's coming more or less straight off with a bit of brushing. But the green underneath stays on. We may even be able to restore it to its original green colour. But I swear to God, I buy tools, use them once, and then they just disappear into a fucking void in this house. Uh, oh, well, trying to find my pinwheel. Um, I found my sandpaper. We'll use that instead, shall we? I used to have like a sanding block as well. Fuck knows where that's gone as well. Right, let's try this sandpaper then. <sighs> you know, that's interesting actually. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but as this yellow stuff is coming away, there's all this lettering being revealed. You know, I might just keep going with this and we'll see what we can discover. This was meant to be a quick job to get this thing painted, but it's turned into a fucking archaeological dig. I might not paint this after all. As I'm sanding it, this yellow and all the other stuff that's been put over the top of this is coming away. And it's revealing the original colour and markings. We're not taking the original green paint off. This could end up looking really fucking cool, just in its original colour. That's quite exciting. All right, let's uh, let's keep going. We've still got a few bits to get rid of. Yeah, look at that. What does that say? So, eight seventy RDS, five point five six millimeter, seventy grain. That's standard NATO cartridges. That's really cool. And these look to be serial numbers. It's still going to be scratched and beat up, but if I can get this to a reasonable standard, I don't think I'm going to need to paint this after all. Look at my fucking hands. <laughs> if I was doing this with power tools, I'd definitely need some sort of breathing apparatus on. Let's just get a damp cloth and see if that helps. See, I always assume these sorts of boxes were like for your 50 caliber guns. You know, they're like they put on the top of their fighting vehicles. You have the big box mounted at the side of the gun with the belts of ammunition that come out of them. But, the, yeah, 5.56, that's small arms. That's rifles and pistols and such like. This is as far as I remember it is, from all the Forgotten Weapons videos I've watched. Right, let's see if we can get a little bit more of this yellow off. I'm conscious I don't want to try and scratch this lot off or scratch up the green too much, but I do want to get rid of some more of this yellow. Right. All right, you know what? We'll come back to that. It's not perfect, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries. Because I could keep going, but I think I'm going to start taking this lettering off, which I kind of want to keep now. Yeah. I'd rather keep a bit of the yellow so I can keep some of the lettering. Let's try the other side. All right, this bit's going to be... Oh. Uh, is it the postman again, dogs? Is it? Have they come to murder us brutally? Hmm? Are you going to savage them? Yes. All right, this bit's not going to have any markings on. It's going to be fiddly, but uh, let's just... Maybe that 
is the key. Maybe I'm scratching this too hard. Yeah. Okay, maybe I don't need sandpaper for this. This um, yellow paint just seems to wash off. <laughs> I've just thought some miserable private who's probably done something wrong in the army and been given one of those really menial tasks to do is <laughs> some <laughs> uh, one of his officers might see this video and think, hmm, you know what, I'll get the privates to clean the ammo boxes. That's fiddly. <laughs> there you go, private, there's 500 ammo boxes there, all covered in pointless yellow paint. Clean them. On them green by dawn. <laughs> and then they'll be like, Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> they'll spend all night cleaning these boxes. In the morning, they'll come back and they'll be like, What is in this ammo box, private? <laughs> they'll go, Sir, jelly donut, sir. <laughs> ah, jelly donut. <laughs> A jelly donut? Can we fight the enemy with jelly donuts, private pile? Sir, no, sir. And what the hell is a jelly donut doing in my ammunition, private pile? <laughs> oh, dear, I fucking amuse myself too much sometimes. <laughs> That's a point. It's a shame that YouTube is so up its own ass about copyright. I mean, I could just do with, as I'm working on this, I mean, I'm making the video, which I love doing, but I could just do with a film or some music on whilst I'm doing this. I mean, but, you know, it'll just immediately get claimed by some faceless corporation as, like, oh, fuck the lot of you, then I'll do it in silence. Uh, Alright, okay, well, we won't bother with sandpaper, then let's just see if we can clean this off. We might even get to see what this sticker says, so... Uh... Um, S. <laughs> Got some more markings here. This black paint's putting up a bit more of a fight. That might need the sandpaper, but the yellow stuff is just coming coming off quite easily. One point four S, whatever that means. Yeah. Oh look, I've, oh no, <laughs> ruining the pad. Never mind. Yeah, so what do these say? Near 1.488 kilos. This box alone weighs more than that, whatever that means. UN, oh, that's just a load of serial numbers. Yeah, 4AY1980 GB, I'm assuming that means Britain made. UN, United Nations. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, let's, uh, let's keep going. This black stuff here is coming off, it's just a bit more stubborn. I like projects like this where they don't quite go the direction that you were planning, but they go in a better direction. Um, yeah, this is great. Uh, right, I'm going to need a drink soon, though. Do you know, I don't think I'm ever going to be fully rid of the yellow. Uh, this lettering is yellow. I think it was probably white to begin with. I think there's always going to be traces that this was spray painted almost all completely in yellow, but that's okay because, yeah, if, to get rid of all of it, I would have to strip it basically down to its bare metal um, and then repaint it. And I don't want to do that because a box like this has probably been all around the world and it sort of strips it of its character. I mean, I know to some people it's just a box, but to me this sort of stuff is interesting. So, yeah, as long as we get rid of most of the yellow and it's maybe just hints of it here and there, then I can live with that. Um, I do want to get this black paint off, though. Let's see what this says underneath. Then it says carry. Then we've got UN zero something. Yeah, let's keep going and see what we can see.
And there we have it. Look at that. Now it's not 100% perfect. Um, I haven't managed to get all of the yellow paint off of here. But that's fine because I was starting to lose the lettering. I'd rather have hints of yellow and more of the lettering. Interestingly, you see around the edge here, it's down to bare metal. I don't think that was me sanding it. It might have been, but yeah, nice shiny metal bits there. That'll give us a nice rusty edge eventually. Again, fine. That's the look I'm going for. A little bit of rust here and there. Yeah, the lid is probably the worst bit. It's got the most rust on it. And some of the yellow bits were really stubborn. They weren't coming off, but... Again, that's not the end of the world. This side has probably come out the best. Um, yeah, I managed to get that sticker nice and clean. It's intact. Cartridges, small arms, UN. Yeah, look at that. All right, so next stage, we need to start getting this ready to go on the bike. There is just one thing I want to check first, and that's which way around I can mount it. I want me to do it that way because... Well, I'll show you in a minute, but there's a, um, the bike has a back seat to it, and there's like a backrest here. So I may not have the space to mount it on and still be able to get the lid open fully. So it might have to go that way. So I'm just going to do some checks on that, but I want to mount it that way. If that's the back of the bike, and then we'll have the lid open that way. Yeah, let's see if we can make that happen. Right, this is what I mean with it. So this is where we're wanting to put it. This is what you know where it's designed to carry a top box. We've got this backrest here, which is angled back slightly, so it's encroaching on our space. So we've only got space for a very small box here. That's part of the reason I chose an ammo box. So they're actually quite small compared to regular top boxes that you can buy. Now I could take this off, but I think it's going to look a bit weird then having the seat there and no backrest. So I'd rather not do that. So the original plan was to put it that way like that because then it clears this we can still get the lid open um, and we've got plenty of space for the reflector what i'm thinking now though i can't put the reflector on that end because that's where the buckle is so it has to go that way the problem is, is then to get that open that amount of clearance it's going to be hanging out like that much that's too far that just looks really daft <laughs> and looks like it might fall off i mean some top boxes do hang out that far but i don't really want mine to do that so yeah i think back to plan a which is mounted that way which as you can see move the camera over we clear the back of the seat and we can put it right on the edge but that looks all right. Let's zoom out. There you go. Look at that. It's all right. Excuse the mess of the garden, but that doesn't look too bad like that. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to just go with that way then. Right. Here's what we're going to do. So we can't have it lengthways because as I just showed you, it's going to hang out way too far over the end of the bike. Could it be done? Yeah. I could certainly mount it securely that way. It wouldn't be dangerous in any way. I just think it looks a bit silly and a bit unnecessary. So we're going to go back to plan A, which is widthways. Um, it's going to be that way. And the reason being is, if you imagine, this is the back of the bike, so handlebars behind. We drive on the left in the UK, so it's just a, yet another thing. Say I pull over at the side of the road. Now, I'm unlikely to do this. I'm going to, If I'm going to stop, I want to go in my top box, which, let's be honest, is going to be carrying my lunch and pretty much nothing else. I'm going to find somewhere safe to stop. But let's say I did have to stop at the side of the road for whatever reason. I want to be to the left of the bike so the traffic is the other side. So I'm not stood in traffic. I mean, it's very little protection. If someone's going to hit the bike, chances are they're going to hit me as well. But it still gives me, you know, two or three feet worth of extra safety. So it will go that way. We'll put the reflector on this side, which is okay, actually, because where I've sandpapered it, I have actually scratched up the paint quite a bit and lost some of the lettering. So putting the reflector here isn't going to be the end of the world. And we still get to keep some of the better lettering on this side. So it's going to go that way. So imagine I'm stood here. I'll flip that open. We will start. Let's get the reflector on first, shall we? But first, a cup of tea. I'm parched.
Right, anyway, so we're going to put the reflector. Now, the lettering is better on this side, so rather than just put it centrally, I think it would look okay if we put it off to the side like that. Now, we're going to cover that up, which says... Oh, it's the, oh, it's the size of it. So the volume of it is 0 0.009 cubic metres. And then that is... Oh, what does that say? O W L, I think, 14.6 kilos. Which, yeah, so it's a... Uh, 0 0.009 cubic meters worth of internal space and I wouldn't say that's 14 kilos maybe 14 kilos when it's full of ammunition but yeah if we put that in the corner like that it doesn't look too bad I don't think no that looks quite all right actually we still get to keep most of this lettering visible still got the reflector on for safety and, yeah, the good lettering on the other side can still be seen. I mean, it's going to be somewhat obscured because it's mounted on the bike, but, yeah, that could work quite well. We'll put it right there, I think. Right, I need to go find me drill. We have got full battery. Excellent. We'll use the reflector itself as a guide. Start off on low speed, drill setting, maximum torque setting. Yeah, we'll use this as a guide. And if we go gentle. Next. All right, that's barely making a dent. High speed it is then, bollocks to you. All right. Better. Look at that. Straight through. Minimal burning smell. That is Wilco 16 piece mixed drill bit set, and I've used the twist drill, which is marked for metal use. As you can see. They did a pretty damn good job of it, too. Well, we've got a little bit of a burr of metal. That's okay. We can just file that off. Uh, I think my files might be down in the shed at the moment, though, so never mind. Let's go see what we can find nuts and bolts-wise, shall we? Hopefully, these are going to fit, because these are ideal. What well, these are, I'll come around and show you. These came with, well, they were spare with the number plate for the bike. It's got four of these. There's little plastic nut and bolts holding the uh, the number plate on. I've got two. I was going to put some metal nuts and bolts there, but these are probably going to be better for it, actually. So, yeah. Right, let's see. Hopefully, these are going to fit. Yeah, look at that. too bad i don't think i mean yeah they're sticking out but that's okay i can live with that and on the inside look there's minimal intrusion into my actual space so and say i just rammed a load of stuff in there if that was on the inside i'd run the risk of snapping them off because they are only plastic and even if they were metal i then run the risk of snagging stuff and scratching my valuables up so that's good i like that way that's a good way of doing it right Next stage, mounting it. Now this is kind of a critical thing. So far we've done appearance and we've put a reflector on. This is the actual safety critical bit. Um, we need to get this right. It needs to be secure and very firmly attached. I don't want this rattling or shaking around as I'm, as I'm riding. Yeah, but it also needs to be aware that it doesn't damage the bike or anything like that. So, right, we need to go back out to the bike, offer this up for fit and work out where we're going to put these. So what I want to try and do is 
get this mounted around this thicker bar. Uh, we'll avoid using this inner one. We'll just put some thicker in there for strong. Well, we'll get this as central as we can, like that. And we'll offer these up and mark the box with permanent marker. What I'm thinking is like that on the corners of the box. And what I want is I want the clamp to miss this bit. So we'll just angle it over slightly. And we'll do it there. Yeah, like that. That should work. Let's do the other side. Alright. Let's get it drilled then. This is probably the most critical phase. It's over. More holes there. And holes there. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just go for it, shall we? Now, I wish I had a way of clamping this down, but I don't, because the jaws on this bench don't open up enough, so we're just going to fucking go for it. Loud noises. <laughs> have a look see which way around is going to be the best way around for this because I'm thinking it's going to be that way so let's undo this you know what I've just realized there's another very good reason why I should do it that way up because then these nuts that I'm going to be trying to tighten up are much easier to get to when I'm going down into the box. So otherwise I'm going to have to try and get between the rear mud guard and the rear light, try and get onto them, whereas this way I can just get my socket straight on. So actually I've realised that decides it, it's going that way up. So, uh, right. So the next stage is we need to try and get our little uh, rubber grommets in somehow, our little vibration dampeners, and then we bolt it on and we're done. We have a top box. Right, okay, let's get started this corner. socket set we'll get these tightened up
Nothing's ever simple, is it? having is as the nut is going down the thread sort of like that um there's too much thread poking through for my socket to stay on so now i'm having to do it with a spanner but there's so little room inside the box it's taking forever to tighten it up this is what i hate um when this happens when you get in projects you're just stuck into doing something really tedious and difficult, making such slow progress. And we're so close to being done as well. So I'm gonna get the camera in and see if I can show you what I mean. Yeah, so I'm trying to do up this nut here. And you can see, I can literally give it, get the spanner up, and give it like that much, not even a quarter of a turn. It when this happens the problem is there are tools that would get around this for me but they're not cheap and this is one of those situations that occurs so infrequently that I can't justify the expense of going out and buying a whole tool just for this situation <laughs> the disc lock is still on. It's not happy with me shaking the back. Let's do this other side for a bit, shall we? Right, I've changed my mind because I'm going to be here all fucking afternoon trying to do this. We're going to do them bolt side down because I thought I would have an easy time doing them up this way, but I, I could be here all fucking afternoon trying to do these up. So we're going to take them out, swap them around, and yeah, hopefully I'll have more room under here. Hopefully. So let's get these on done.
go off somewhere else. Let's do the other side. Right, I think we're there. Look at that. I'll zoom out a touch. That looks pretty fucking good, I think. I'm not too keen on the look of the bolts sticking out the bottom. I think that's a bit untidy. I would have preferred those to be on the inside, but I was going to be here all fucking day trying to do them up. So yeah, that might have to be a job for another day. I might try and see if I can get some different clamps that are a bit shorter, or if I've just got time, I'll redo them. But for now, they're okay. I mean, you can't really see them if I stand up straight. This is the cameras at head height, you can't really see. Reflectors looking good. Uh, there's a bit of movement, but that's not going anywhere. Um, I have to see if it rattles at all as I'm going along. Yeah, we may have to try and put a third clamp around the back. But for now, I'm quite impressed with that. Taking me probably half a day to make. It'd have been a bit faster if I'd had the right tools for doing these clamps up, but never mind. That's not half bad, isn't that? Certainly never coming off. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm not overly impressed with the amount of playing it. Maybe we will end up drilling and putting another clamp in there just to keep it steady, but that's okay for today. Yeah. Alright, yeah. I'm gonna call that it. Thank you for watching. But wait, there's more. Should I tell you what would be a good test? Before I go out for a ride with it, why don't I just start the engine and see what that does to it? So it's that idle. At idle, obviously, um, yeah, carburetor bike, so it was a bit of a rough idle to begin with, but that's good because it allowed the whole bike to vibrate a bit. I couldn't see any real movement in it, and then when I rev the engine up, the handle on it does start to vibrate a bit, so we might have to do something about that, find a way to tape it down, perhaps, or maybe put some rubber around it so that's not too bad. And, of course, that little bit of the latch did drop down but again i'm not too worried about that but overall and yeah i didn't see any undue vibration with that even put it in gear and just let the back wheels spin so the whole bike was shaking a bit and yeah that was great as well so as you can see the weather's still a bit crap it's fucking freezing and it's still really quite windy we're quite sheltered here in the garden but i just went out the front and it's really windy so i don't think i'm going to go out today but yeah maybe tomorrow and then we'll have a look see what it looks like Right, it's the next day. Now, after I gave up filming yesterday, I sort of sat and thought and then had nightmares about the look of those clamps on the bottom. With the, the nuts sticking out of the bottom at all different angles, it was just ugly as sin. And I just I just couldn't live with it. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to rectify that. Um, I'm not going out biking because we are now have even worse weather than we had yesterday. Um, I've just driven into town, in the car, obviously, and, um, yeah, it was just fucking awful weather. The really heavy rain, the winds picked back up. So we're not going biking yet again. And even worse is I forgot to put the cover back on the bike last night after I'd finished filming, and now it's all wet. Fucking great. But, no, I've bit the bullet. I've gone out and bought myself a deep socket set, so we should be able to do those clamps up properly today. 
and finally, finally get it all finished off. All right, once again, apologies for any wind noise. We have our deep socket, look at that. that yeah, fits perfectly. Right. I think say this box won't be going anywhere by the time I'm done with this. We do have more to do uh, today, mind, rather than just tightening up these nuts. I had a few other ideas on how to improve upon this uh, little design. So. If you're wondering why there's water inside it as well, um, I went and left the fecking lid open, didn't I? I was sort of fiddling with this late at night by torchlight after I'd finished filming, trying to see what I could do with it. And uh, yeah, when I finally gave up, I forgot to shut the lid, so now we've got water in it. That's all right, because that'll just dry out and it'll probably drain out through these holes anyway, so that's not an issue. Uh, okay, that one's as tight as it's going to get. That is certainly on firmly now. Right. Fun fact about this wrench that I'm using, when I got the Mazda, which you'll see if you have a look at my um, cars playlist, well I didn't get it actually, it belongs to my partner, but I do all the work on it, but anyway, that's not the point. Go on, on you go. Yeah, there was a lot of crap left in the boot, um, there was like an old hat, it belonged to an, an airman on the local military base and he was going back to, back to America. Uh, yeah, there was like a hat in there that was like extra, extra small and, I, you know, that went in the bin. Well, I think the dog chewed that and then it went in the bin. And there was a few other just like bits of paperwork and rubbish. It all went in the bin. And then I find this sitting at the bottom of it. And I think he'd been using it in place of the toolkit, you know, if he ever got a, um, a puncture. Because um, it was just this wrench and one socket with it which fits the wheel nuts. It's a really good quality tool. I can only imagine he... Um, and appropriated it from his work from one of the um, the aircraft workshops on base because that's what they do there it's primarily aircraft maintenance and so yeah I am currently tightening up the bolts on my DIY top box with United States Air Force property <laughs> yeah that is a lot that is a lot better so yesterday after I'd finished with it there was still some movement but that's not going anywhere now yeah, snap that shut. If I pull at it, it's still a little bit of a rattle, but yeah, the only thing that I think is going to be rattling really is going to be this, this handle. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that. Right, I think my uh, bacon sarnie is ready, so I'm going to go right eat that. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll carry on. We've got one more thing I want to do with this to finish it off. Finishing touches now. I'm really happy with how the box looks. Um, I can see it from the window here. It's just sort of out of shot that way. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it looks. I'm really happy with how securely fastened it is now that we've got the proper socket set to do those nuts up right. Literally the final touches. Uh, I had this idea last night. I suppose you could call it, we're gonna put in like a, a false floor almost. Basically just something to line the bottom. So we're gonna start off, I've got a piece of sponge that um, actually was more or less the same size as um, as the bottom of the box. Um, I just had to get a couple of extra little bits that will go on the end. And that will sit at the bottom. You can see I've cut a slit in it so it will fit around the, uh, around the screws like that. That will sit in the bottom and help reduce, you know, vibration, transmit to anything inside. And um, then on top of it, we're just going to put... This piece of wood. Um, this used to be a cheese board, um, but it's, it's a bit cheap and nasty. And if you get any sort of like oil or grease on it, it just sort of absorbs it. So yeah, it's not the most hygienic thing in the world. So we're going to repurpose this. It's exactly the right width. It is just sort of one and a half centimeters too long to fit in it. So we're going to trim it off. We'll lay this in the bottom and yeah, pack it in. And I think that'll look quite quite good actually we have this nice piece of wood with you know the olive green of the inside of the box I think it's going to look pretty sweet certainly look a lot more professional with the uh, nuts and bolts hidden underneath so we, yes. we just need to mark up this piece of wood where we want to cut it we want to cut it's it's like two centimeters ish one and a half off the end here so the 
internal diameter of the box is 27.9 centimeters so we are just going to mark this up i can't find my carpenter's pencils fucking anywhere um, i think i might throw them away actually i think they got damp in the shed and i just threw them away but it's not like a pen will do so i'm just going to mark it there and i mark this in three spaces so that i know i'm drawing a straight line down so that we'll get a nice snug even fit Do. Loud noises. Oops. Sweet. Right. No, don't eat that, Archer. And yes, I am doing woodwork in the house. My partner's away for the weekend, so I can do this. I'll just clean up before I get back. Uh, I don't really have anywhere else to do it. I don't want to do it outside. It's raining. Electric power tools in the rain. Are you insane? Uh, right, okay. Let's go and... This is it. Yeah. Yeah. Final touches. Oh, dog's getting under my feet. first so these bits of sponge aren't really going to serve much purpose other than like I say you know maybe reduce some vibration or say I'm out on a bike ride and I get caught in the rain I could use them to dry my bike down um, but yeah and then the last bit the piece of wood oh getting stuck on it there we go there we are look at that it's angling you in so all right, that's a perfect fit. That is a noisy ass dove just landed on my fence. <laughs> yeah, look at that. I was thinking, that looks too bad. I mean, it's not nearly as deep as the original ammo box. We've lost, you know, a good couple of inches, but I think it looks quite good. I suppose if I ever wanted to, I could always just pop this piece of wood back out. Um, uh, if I'd. If I could get hold of it, that is. Oops, that might be stuck in there. But yeah, if I find a way to get this back out, I can always put stuff underneath it as well. Say I could put like my uh, my wallet underneath it, for example, or something like that. But yeah, I think that looks pretty sweet. So uh, yeah, we're going to leave it there. That is how you build your own top box from an ammo can. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video on... But wait, there's more. No, I'm joking. There's no more. That's it. It's over with. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video on Pydini doing stuff and filming it. Please don't forget to press the big button here in the middle to subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you liked what you just saw, please click the like button below and leave a comment letting me know what you liked about it. And as always, thank you for watching.